Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited because we are officially just two days away from Christmas Eve. Now, for today's video, we'll be making one of those beautiful wreath charcuterie boards that are super trending right now. I've been seeing them everywhere and I absolutely love it. So in this video, I'll be showing you my take on this board and I truly hope it gives you some inspiration on how you can make a beautiful board of your own and hopefully not spend too much either. You can honestly use it as a centerpiece to a table of appetizers or you can just bring it over to a friend's house and just share amongst a small group. But no matter what, it's a great way to make something easy and delicious and impress your guests all at the same time. <laughs> now with that said, we'll be making a pit stop at Aldi, Trader Joe's, and Home Goods. I love all of these three places when I'm making a charcuterie board. You can find so many affordable items. Also, before we head into the video, I just wanted to say thank you to all of my new followers on this channel. I can't tell you how much it means to me to have you here. If you're new on this channel and you love this video, make sure to give this video a like and make sure to subscribe to my channel. It truly does make a world of a difference. And of course, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to comment down below. And with that being said, let's head out. Hey guys, so I just got to Aldi right now. So we're gonna head inside and see what we find. Like I've mentioned before, I really love Aldi when it comes to making a charcuterie board. I honestly feel like you just can't beat it for the price. They also always have really nice seasonal stuff, which is perfect because for our charcuterie board, it'll be very holiday themed. Now, anything I don't find here, I will probably get at Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's has so many nice things for the holidays and they also have a really great selection on cheeses and meats. Trader Joe's is also so nicely decorated for the holidays, which I feel like really helps with getting the creative juices flowing when it comes to making a charcuterie board so we'll definitely head over there next Aldi is always my first starting point for all kinds of meats cheeses seasonal cookies nuts and crackers they truly have a great variety for such a great price so when I first got to Aldi, I headed straight over to the seasonal aisle with all the cookies because I honestly just couldn't contain my excitement. So I found these cinnamon star cookies that were just $3.99 and you get a whole bunch of stars. So this can definitely take you into New Year's. <laughs> I also found these spiced cookies that kind of reminded me of a gingerbread man. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to find some, so I made sure to get these just in case. It comes with a whole ton of them for just $2.99. I picked up this super affordable brie for just $2.99 and this cranberry cinnamon goat cheese that is such a fan favorite and is only $1.99. You just can't beat it. And for 50 cents more, Aldi does also offer some other seasonal flavors if cranberry cinnamon is not your style. If you're also more of a cheddar cheese kind of person, but you do want to enjoy that cranberry flavor, Aldi does also offer a cranberry white cheddar cheese. Next, I picked up my favorite aged white cheddar at Aldi. It's only $2.65 and it goes such a long way. And surprisingly, they actually had some Mancheco because I can rarely get my hands on one of these. The whole block is priced at just $4.99, which is a lot better than most places. I also wanted to get some other fun cheddar cheeses. So they had this champagne cheddar cheese, which is perfect for New Year's Eve, and this balsamic onion cheddar cheese. Next, I headed over to the nuts section since I wanted some fun seasonal nuts and I came across these rosemary marcana almonds for just $4.99. Now these types of almonds can get pretty pricey so this was definitely a steal in my book. And of course if you're not too into rosemary they also offer a sea salt marcana almond version as well. Last but not least I picked up these quinoa chocolate hazelnut bites for the first time. They were just $3.49 and so worth every penny. As a secondary nut, I picked up some of this cranberry trail mix. Next, I picked up a couple more things and then headed over to Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's is so great for unique finds, especially during the holidays. And personally, I think they have great quality. The first thing I picked up at Trader Joe's were these mini gingerbread people that looked so delicious. They were just $3.19. And then I picked up this perfect classic cracker assortment for just $3.49 as well. 
And then I found the most delicious thing, this beautiful truffle pecorino cheese. Guys, I am not even kidding. I could smell the truffle through the plastic. I knew I just had to buy this. And surprisingly, it was only $7.79. I also made sure to pick up my rosemary here since it's only $1.69 and some pomegranate seeds. They have organic and non-organic, so feel free to choose which one you like best. And some fresh cranberries. And before I headed home, I just had to make a stop at Home Goods. So I actually was on a quest to find some ramekins to add to my board, and I found these, which were absolutely perfect. I ended up taking a couple different types home and both packs were only about $6, so it was definitely worth the stop. All right guys, so I just got back from Aldi and Trader Joe's and I even made a pit stop at Home Goods. And if you can't tell, I totally overbought, but honestly, anything that I don't use today, I will use another time, so I'm not worried about it at all. Now, let me just do a quick review of everything I got. Okay, so here we just have a nice cracker assortment that I got at Trader Joe's. Now, they do have one that I love even more at Aldi. That one is the absolute best. It actually has six types of crackers instead of four, and it is cheaper, but they did not have it available, so I did manage to get one of my favorite crackers there, which is the original wheat cracker. So I got that at Aldi, and then that one at Trader Joe's. And then um, below that, I also have all of our meats. I got all these at Aldi, and they're all honestly such a great price. Between all of these three trays, we probably have about like six to seven meats, which is great. And then besides that, I also got two different types of unique cheddars. So we have a balsamic onion cheddar cheese. Yum, I cannot wait to try that. And then champagne cheddar cheese. This sounds so celebratory, and I think this would actually work so well for any like birthday type of charcuterie board or like a New Year's Eve one. So cute and great for the holidays. And I also made a stop at Home Goods, as you probably saw. I wanted to just get some small little ramekins that would look really nice to put some honey into. These would work for all different types of appetizers and different dishes that you can serve. Now, um, here is just a nice little trail mix that I found at Aldi. I felt like this was a really nice combination for the holidays. And then we also got some Mancheco. I also did already have another Mancheco at home and I will probably end up using this one because it is red on the side and I feel like that is just so cute for the holidays. Trader Joe's does sell one just like this. I actually just got this at my regular supermarket. And then here we have a nice classic white cheddar. I got this one at Aldi and it again is very inexpensive. I do like this one because it is aged so it does have a really nice flavor to it. Here I also got some double smoked cheddar cheese. I felt like this would add um, a nice fun smoky flavor to the board. Here I have my absolute favorite crackers. I love these, they are wheat mini toasts. They don't taste like wheat, they're just like mini toasts and they're delicious and honestly, I think they go good with pretty much every board I've ever made, which is why I always buy them. They're even really nice for little appetizers. Here I got some truffle cheese at Trader Joe's, which I am so excited about. I am an absolute truffle lover, so this is like everything to me. Here I got some cranberries, which are perfect for the holidays as well. I also saw these quinoa chocolate hazelnut bites at Aldi. They were pretty inexpensive, and I thought this would be really fun for the charcuterie board as well. Now at Trader Joe's, I also got some arugula. I feel like this would be a really nice base for the wreath charcuterie board. So I'm gonna be adding this more in the center, and I will be layering my cheeses and meats on top of that. So that's kind of the idea I have. If not, I'll just make a really nice salad with it. <laughs> and then here we have rosemary. So I'm gonna be using this to kind of create a border on the inside and outside of the charcuterie board so that it looks like a wreath. Here we have some rosemary mercana almonds. Some organic pomegranate seeds. Not sure what I'm gonna do with these yet, but I just think that pomegranate seeds are super holiday and it'll give a nice bright color to the charcuterie board with all the greens that'll be on the board. Here we have some cranberry cinnamon goat cheese. Now this is so, so popular during the holidays and I have to say people absolutely love it. And then at Aldi I also saw these cookies that I've heard are absolutely delicious. I thought they looked really nice and seasonal as well, so I'll definitely be tossing a couple of these onto the board. And then one of my absolute favorite items, we have these mini gingerbread people from Trader Joe's and these are so cute. Now I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to find some cute gingerbread men, so I found these at Aldi, and I think this is something really cute as well. They kind of give me the same vibe as a gingerbread man, except it's not, it's like a little house. But I think they're a really nice option um, for a gingerbread man if you can't find them. 
And then last but not least, I did purchase some Brie from Aldi as well. I think Brie is always a great thing to put on a board. Um, people love it as well, including myself. I am a fanatic of Brie. So that is pretty much everything I purchased. So now let's get into it. So I'm gonna get started with this 17 inch cutting board, which I love because it spins. Next, I'm going to use my arugula to start making a background for our Christmas wreath. So this is really gonna be the foundation for our entire board. So you can already start forming out what you want your wreath to look like. And then we're just gonna to top all these greens with all of our charcuterie. What I love about adding the arugula in the background is that every single corner will be covered. So if there's ever an area that's missing some charcuterie or some meats or really anything at all, it'll at least be green. So it'll always look like a Christmas wreath, which is exactly what we're going for. Next, I'm gonna pull out my fresh rosemary so I can start creating the trimming for the wreath. And for this board, the rosemary is really gonna give it that Christmas wreath touch. So I'm just going to use this rosemary to create that trim along the edges on the outside. And I'm also gonna use it to create a trim along the inside as well. So this will just form the frame of our wreath. I absolutely love rosemary during the holiday time because I feel like it really just gives that perfect Christmas look. Of course, we can't put actual pine on this board, but um, rosemary really gives the same exact look but of course it is edible. Now, since many of the rosemary branches might be very straight, you can always just bend it right in the center. You won't be able to tell, and it'll still give it more of that curved look that we're looking for on a wreath. now that our wreath looks perfect and we have lots of greens on our board now it's time to start taking out our cheeses i'm gonna pull out our cutting board and our brie so i'm just going to unwrap our brie so i'm actually going to cut our brie several times so that we can get multiple wedges and we are actually going to use this to create a bow so of course christmas wreaths always have a nice bow on them so i'm going to use these wedges to go ahead and create that bow you can also use manchego cheese or any other cheese that you can really just fan out will work just fine for this i'm going to cut this in half eight times leaving me with 16 wedges I really love brie it's very affordable and i find that it's always a great cheese to include on a charcuterie board but of course you can use any other cheese that will allow you to cut wedges as well and i'm just going to turn my brie after every cut to make sure that i can get as straight of a cut as possible And this is just the perfect size wedge. And I'm just gonna layer out two wedges at a time so that I can make sure that each side looks pretty much identical. And you're just going to adjust them until you get the look that you want. And I think this looks just about right. So we are good to go here. And now it's time to make the center of the bow. So I'm gonna grab some fresh cranberries and I'm actually just going to roll these in sugar. So for this, I'm just going to use some white granulated sugar and some water if you end up needing it. And I'm just going to toss my cranberries right in the sugar. And this will give me just the frosty look that I'm going for and roll them until they're fully covered in sugar. Now, of course, if you find that the sugar isn't quite sticking to the cranberry, you can always dip it in water. But I find sometimes that if the cranberry is too wet, then too much sugar gets onto the cranberries and you just want to lightly frost it. So give it a try without the water first. And then if you find it's not sticking, dab it with a little bit of water and that should do the trick. And once your cranberries look good, you can toss them right in the center of your bow. Next up, we are going to grab that cranberry cinnamon goat cheese that people absolutely love. And all I'm going to do is actually just slice this goat cheese and layer it out. This is a very easy thing to add to the board. And I think the color just looks so holiday. This is so nice for Christmas, New Year's Eve, just throughout the entire holiday season with the cranberry and the cinnamon and the colors. I love it. I have put this on so many boards and I have to say, my family's obsessed with it. Every single time I put this on a board, people fall in love with it. Even the non-goat cheese lovers really love it as well. So definitely give it a try. I also think it's nice to put something thick like this along the edges. I always like to put some of my heavier cheeses and items along the outside so that if I put any loose nuts or anything like that on the opposite side, I know it's not gonna fall off the board. 
Next up, I'm gonna add this cute little ramekin that I got at Home Goods, and I'm gonna fill this up with honey. And then I also got this honey dipper off Amazon. So I bought this in a pack of six for about $6. Came in about a day. Such a fun, cute little touch to add to a charcuterie board. Since I'm putting brie on the board, I always like to include honey on the board as well. So I will make sure to list the link down below in case you're interested in ordering it. Next, it's time to pull out our meats. So I'm gonna get started with some prosciutto. So the first thing we're gonna do with our prosciutto is we are going to make prosciutto roses. So in order to do this, you're just gonna take out a slice and cut it right in half. And then you're gonna grab half the slice and begin to roll it. So you wanna roll it nice and tight along the center to pretty much create the inside of the rose. And then after you've created a tight center just like this, now I'm gonna start rolling it really nice and loose to kind of give it a little bit more of that rose look. Now I have to say this is definitely more of a messy type of rose, not like a salami rose that looks a little bit more clean. However, the prosciutto roses honestly pair so nice with the salami roses that we'll be adding on this board. I love how prosciutto roses are a little bit smaller, which I feel like really add a different texture and just an overall different look on a charcuterie board. And now that I have one complete, I'm gonna use the other half of the slice of prosciutto to go ahead and make another rose following all the same steps. I've also noticed that it is really helpful to go ahead and pinch the bottom of the rose as well to kind of keep it nice and tight and together. And now that we have five cute little prosciutto roses, we're gonna use another technique. And for this, I'm just going to grab a slice and fold it in half. And then you wanna fold it back and forth, almost until it appears to look like a ribbon. And then you wanna pinch it on the bottom folded side, allowing for it to look like more of a ribbon on the top. Now it's time to take out our manchego cheese. Like I mentioned earlier, I really love this manchego just because it does have the red wax on the outside. I really want to display the red as much as possible on the board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut a couple of slices and I'm gonna make sure to cut the left and the right side of this cheese so that we can show as much of that beautiful red as possible. And I'm just going to layer these, kind of fanning them out along the outside of the board, just giving the board some more texture and dimension. And to add some more Mancheco to the board, because I love this stuff, this has to be one of my absolute favorite cheeses, I'm gonna cut thicker slices and then I'm just going to place them back and forth so that they look like a zigzag. And then I'm just gonna place this right here. I think this is a good spot for it. And I think I'm gonna add just one more slice and that'll make just the perfect amount. Good to go. Next, I'm gonna go right back into my meats with this bite-sized salami. You can just layer it on a board just like this and it gives the board so much flavor. I love the salami because it has a nice spice to it. Once again, very affordable and so easy to add to a board. And next, we are gonna add our gingerbread men, which is a moment I have been waiting for. These are so cute and honestly, the perfect touch for a holiday board. Not to mention, they are so delicious. <laughs> the backside of each gingerbread man is covered in a white fudge frosting. I mean, honestly, could that sound any more delicious? <laughs> So I'm just gonna place these right here to my right corner for now and then also on the left side and I think that should be good for now. I can always add some more later. And next, we are actually going to make some salami roses. Now, I know I have mentioned this before in one of my previous videos, but just wanna mention how much I love this Appleton Farms deli selection. Now, we'll be creating a salami rose out of each of these three meats. 
This pack comes with pepper salami, hot capicolo, and hot calabrese. It really does offer a great variety for a great price. So for this method, the first thing we're gonna do is line up five pieces of my salami. And then I'm just gonna fold the whole row in half. I like to apply some pressure right on the bottom to make sure it's nicely folded. And then from there, all we're gonna do is roll. And you can feel free to roll this nice and tight. You don't have to use any special technique. You're just gonna wanna make sure that you roll it nice and straight. So as you can tell, it's already starting to look like a rose. So this is what I would call more of the inside of the rose. And then from here, I'm gonna grab one more piece of salami, fold that right in half, and then we're just going to wrap our rose. And now I'm gonna grab a second piece and fold it right in half and do the same exact thing. And for the last petal, I'm going to grab the last piece of this salami, fold it in half as well, and wrap it around the last empty side of the rose, making sure that it's overlapping the last two petals that we just added to the rose. And then our rose is almost done. So to make sure that it's tightly secured, I'm just gonna grab a toothpick, and I'm just gonna put the toothpick right through the rose, trying to make sure that I am grabbing the ends of the petals that we just added. And we're pretty much just gonna do a crisscross with the toothpicks. I find that that's the best way to make sure it's secured. And once that's good to go, now you can actually just start to open up those petals as much as you want to really just give you the desired look. But what I love about this technique is to me, just the most realistic to a natural rose because it's nice and narrow. And then you don't have to worry about the rose falling apart at all on your board. Um, it pretty much just stays exactly as you laid out. I know there are so many cool techniques and different ways to make these roses. A lot of people love to use the TikTok method to make their salami rose, which is absolutely great and super easy as well. But this is the technique that I find that's easiest for me and I hope that it helps you as well. And then I'm just gonna follow the same process for each of the other roses. So you'll start off with five to six petals lined up. You'll go ahead and fold all of those together and then you'll just roll that right up. And then we'll use the remaining three pieces of salami as the last petals of the rose. And there we are, half of our rose, and it looks so beautiful. And then I'm gonna fold each of these last three pieces of salami for the last three petals. And I feel like these last three petals really make the rose because once the toothpicks are in, you, you can really adjust them to give the rose the look that you're going for. And when you're putting your toothpick through the rows, you're gonna wanna make sure that your toothpick pierces right through the area where both of your two petals are overlapping each other. So as you can tell in this area right here, I have two of my petals overlapping. And it's important to make sure that when you put the toothpick through the rows, that it's also coming out of the area where both of the two petals are overlapping once again on the other side. And of course, once those toothpicks are nice and secured, you can really have fun with the petals and really give the rose the look that you're going for. And this is our last rose, so I'm gonna follow the same process one last time. And I just feel like you can truly appreciate the petals that much more because of the color. And now I'm gonna add some of my favorite crackers. Here, I am just going to slightly stagger them. And I'm just gonna move this over just a little bit and add some more crackers in this corner as well. Next, we are using this delicious truffle cheese. This stuff is so good. I just had to try a bite before I started cutting. This truffle cheese is gonna add a nice little elegant touch. And to add this to the board, I'm just gonna cut some simple slices of the cheese, cut those slices in half, and then cut them in half again. So I have small little rectangles that I can just lay out. And I'm just going to layer them on the left side of the board, pretty much covering this entire open section I have here. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm actually just gonna adjust some of my bite-sized salami so that just a little bit of the salami is overlapping the truffle cheese for more of a clean, crisp look. Next, I'm gonna add some more of that truffle cheese right under these salami roses. I think this is another nice place to put them. And I'm simply just laying these out right next to each other, nice and even. And now that I think about it, I think that this right side here could use one more gingerbread man cookie. So I'm gonna add one more right there. And next we're taking out these quinoa chocolate hazelnut bites. I have to say guys, this is my first time trying these and oh man, they are so delicious. If you can get your hands on these, these are a really nice touch for a board as well. They also add a little bit of darkness, so a little more depth since we have a lot of red on this board. And you can pretty much just add this in any open areas. Next, I'm pulling out these cinnamon star cookies that are just so cute. Truthfully, I have actually never tried these before, but I've only heard great things about them and I personally just love the look of them. So I'm just gonna add a couple of these in some areas to give the board a little extra sparkle. And I also think it's a great thing to add in certain areas that you just wanna add some extra texture to. And they are so perfect for New Year's Eve. So if you're making the New Year's Eve board, definitely have a lot of fun with these stars. And I think that looks super fun just like that. Next, I'm going to add in these delicious pomegranate seeds that are going to add so much beautiful color to this board. I've recently learned how many health benefits pomegranate seeds have. So I think these are just a great thing to add to your diet in general. But for today, we're just going to toss them in for that beautiful color and delicious sweet taste. And since they are so small, take advantage. And, and since they are so small, I'm going to take advantage and toss them into every small little corner that I feel like needs a little love. I'm also going to put just a couple in the center of my bow to give the center of the bow a little pop. And to complete the last empty area on this board, I'm going to use the rest of the brie wedges that I have left. Now so I can create kind of a wave with my brie wedges, I'm going to fan them out and layer them in the same direction. And then once I add the fifth wedge, I'm going to flip over the wedge and change directions so that it looks nice and seamless in that empty spot of the board. And now just to add some finishing touches, I'm going to toss in some more of those chocolates and redefine the trimming along the inside and outside of my wreath with any leftover rosemary that I have. And to finish it off, it's time to add our honey. Now, instead of honey, you can always add an apricot jam or a fig jam or really any jam you love to pair with your charcuterie, but I just love myself some honey. And there we have it, our beautiful holiday charcuterie board. All right guys, I hope that you love this video and I hope that it truly allows you to make your own beautiful creation. With that said, I just wanna wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a wonderful holiday season. I will catch you in the next video. Bye. Merry Christmas, huh?